Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be putting my refurbed engine back in my thousand pound Range Rover Sport. Go on. Oh. Right, well. What? It is gonna start. It is. <laughs> So the big day's arrived, aren't it, Lee? Yeah. Getting the Range Rover on the trailer. Yeah. My Range Rover, not Matt's Range Rover. A lot of years have been waiting for this, and the engine is starting to come together now, so we want to load the Range Rover up on the trailer in Liam's. We're going to get ready to get it to his granddad's garage, is where the job's going to be done, because he's got a two-poster ramp. Yeah. So anyway, let's get up there. So first off, we're just going to go to my house to pick up the Range Rover. We're only going to put the Range Rover on the trailer tonight and my dad's going to tow it up in the morning for me. Tongue goat and everything. <laughs> Suck your slobber up, look. <laughs> yeah, go forward a bit. Go on, you passed it. Got some slick ass reversing going on here. We actually went out and bought ourselves a cheap winch. It only cost us 160 quid and we weren't sure if it would pull the Range Rover up as it's dead weight at 2.7 ton. So this will be the test of whether it works good or not. There we are, I'm gonna attempt to winch this on now with the new winch. Just pulling the, pulling the trailer back, the thing back. Pull the handbrake on tighter, hadn't I? Here's the test. Not yeah. bad that, because that's a tank, that thing. So that's a win. To our surprise, the baby winch actually worked. So it's the next day, my dad's collected the car for me, and we're going to tow it up to my granddad's. So after getting to my granddad's garage with the car, with a bit of technical reversing, we managed to get it in, as there was a parked car park right in front of a no parking sign. The granddad's put a sign there, it says 24 hour access and no parking. And this will friggin' whop the sides to park here. The reason why we put this curb like that there, was for bringing cars around and they could, they could cut the corner and tight there. If either of them reverse back, metre, two metres, we'd be fine. So the problem with this build was really, is the fact that we could only do it over several days, spending an hour or two each night after we'd both finished work. So you may notice days chop and change to whether it's light, dark or bloody raining. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to jack the car up, get it on axle stands, as my granddad's ramp won't pick the car up completely because it'll only pick up a two tonne car and the car weighs more than two and a half tonne. Right, so my dad's been in before I've got here. To get the parts of the body off, you've got to take all your wheel arch liners out. Wheels off, wheel arch liners out. There's a couple of bits to unclip. Uh, pipes for the airbags and stuff like that. On all four corners, that side, this side. And then under your, your brake pipes, because obviously they come to your brakes and they're fastened to the body. So we've just put like a little rubber bung over them there to stop them leaking. Otherwise they'd be fluid everywhere. Just found a couple of nuts there. Someone's obviously dropped there on a previous job. Couldn't find them and sat in there. There's a bulb there as well, see that big bulb? Where's that behind there? Yeah, we're actually on the head when I pull it off. <laughs> so before we lift the body off the chassis, you've got to take the front and rear bumper off, disconnect all the wiring from the body to the engine, and we should be able to undo the bolts and lift the body up. Right, so now we've got brakes undone all the way around, front bumpers off, rear bumpers off. Show you. You've got these big plugs that you have to undo there underneath the back passenger side. Brake pipes are off, all four corners. All the arch liners out. On this side, we've got the fuel filler neck has to come off. I've just done that now. There's a little eight milli right at the top there that you wind out, and that's loose. That's everything we've got on the back side, really. Um, pretty much unplugged. When we start lifting the car up, we'll just run around and check that quick, make sure we've got everything so we don't snap something or yank something clean off. But, yeah. 
So basically, when you've got everything unplugged, as far as we know, Dad's done his years ago, but he can't remember half of it, probably. you basically got to take all your fan out, all your shroud out around your fan. A couple of other little bits to make it easier. Aircon pipes, now there was no aircon in this because there's a hole in the aircon rod. So it was safe to take off. We didn't have to get it degassed. So we already knew it had lost its, its uh, aircon. That's it, under your wiring looms. Brake pipes, wheel arch liners. There's a clip on the top of there for that pipe. And on the other side, there's a black pipe there for the airbags. Just unclip them under your brakes on all four corners. Front and rear bumper off. And then you're probably about right for undoing in the body mounts, which is what he's doing now, screaming his head off under there. And just lift up. Obviously, as you lift up, just try and be gentle as possible and keep an eye on everything, make sure you're not ripping nothing off. But the conclusion we've come to with this engine is already, Dad reckons the turbo's picked up on oil and basically Kettle the turbo, kettle the engine. The rads have got holes in, there's no water in it at all anywhere. And there's oil everywhere. So that, that's his theory on it, without actually looking. You've got five body mounts. You've got one just here on the front corner, one here, one under the doors in the middle, one just past the rear doors and one at the back. It's like a body mount, every, one every metre. Go on. Go. Go. Ow. Whoa. Yeah, left, left, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Just as you say. As you may have seen in the last video with Dan's Mercedes Vito, it's been in a heavy crash. So we're going to plug OBD11 into Dan's Vito and see how many fault codes we've got. That's all you've got to do is plug this in the OBD2 port, switch your ignition on, hit connect, and then it'll say select device. So you'll click that. Right, so all you've got to do is hit tap to scan and it'll go through all the separate diagnostic modules and it'll tell you how many fault codes you've got. Right, so if you've ever got a fault code on, this is a great little way to scan and find out the problem without having to send it to a garage. And by doing this, you could save yourself a few quid. So now it's showing up, five faults found. So we'll click that and we've got a mass airflow fault, intake air temperature. I mean, it has been smashed, so it's going to have some. I thought it'd have more, to be honest. To be honest, yeah, I thought it'd have a lot more. Turbocharger, super, supercharger, inlet pressure. So this is all to do with air on the intake side. Pump A control circuit low. Don't know what that is, and a network error. That's not so many, that. So there we go, OBD11 saved us about 70 quid in garage fees in uh, having it diagnosed, so massive thanks to them. So OBD11 also offers a one-click app function where you can customise features on your car. And depending on your car, you can also do needle sweep. You can add a beep when you lock your car so you know it's locked whilst you're walking away. And you can also do rear reverse folding mirrors. So go and grab yourselves one and you'll thank us later. And if you want to save even more money, you can use code TVR at checkout to save yourselves an extra 10% off. Or you can scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description below. So my fully refurbished engine's just arrived at the garage. So before we can get on with taking the other engine out of the car, we're going to get this out of the van set it on the floor so it's nice and sturdy and safe and get on with taking the other engine out so we can strip it down. So basically today, we're gonna to be getting the old engine out of there, sitting it side by side with this one and just swap everything off that one onto this one, like the wiring loom, stuff like that. Yeah, the gearbox is frigging doozy like. How big bigger than Mercedes, they're stupidly big. A Mercedes? <laughs> So what? It must be you that you come up with some daft words on here. Some people have mentioned it. Like, I think I'm saying stupid words. Mercedes, Mercedes. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the plan. Get that out of there. Got a nice little something to show you on that as well. Ooh, it's not good. 
So to get the engine off the chassis, you've just got to undo all the gearbox bolts and it's literally just two nuts and the engine will lift off the engine mounts. And when I first went to buy this Range Rover, we suspected that the diesel pump belt had snapped, which is the belt that you can see on the back of the engine here. But as you can see now, it's intact and we were wrong. So it's still a bit of a mystery as to what is actually wrong with this engine, but hopefully we'll soon find out the more we strip it out. That pipe there runs over that. We think it's meant to have a clip, so this, this pipe here goes in there. It looks like it should have a clip around that. That holds that pipe up. Anyway. That looks on mine. It hasn't. Got yeah. It hasn't, and it's rubbed through there. Melted a decent size hole. So we're saying it's pissed all its gubbins out. And obviously when the lad's been driving it, it's just run dead off and just seized itself. So now that the engine's unbolted from the chassis, we can then pick it up with the engine hoist, but we have to do this really slowly as to make sure we don't break or snap any plugs or ruin any pipes. So once we lifted the engine off the chassis and it was swinging around in the air, we actually noticed there's a massive hole in the side of the block, which is probably part of the reason why the engine locked up on us a few videos ago when we were trying to start it. Let me just get a shot of this whilst... Nice lovely hole. That bit there smashed out of there somehow. So it's another new day. We're going to get all the auxiliaries off the old engine, put them onto the new engine so it's ready for going back into the car. Engine's out, just need to get all the bits off that engine, put it on that engine, put that engine back in the car. Simple. So now that we've built the engine up as much as we can before putting in the hole, the next step is we're just going to turn the engine over off the starter from a battery. So basically we're just turning the engine over to create oil pressure in the engine. Just so, there we go, we've got oil coming out in the turbo. Just so we know it's building pressure before we put it back in the truck and realise it's not. So it's a new day, it's a new task, we're going to get this engine back in the hole, but first we're going to get the gearbox serviced and then we can drop the engine back in the hole. So now that we've got the engine back on its engine mounts, sat on the chassis, we can move the engine crane out the way and bolt everything back up. Right, so we just had a mission getting the torque converter tightened up. you basically got to do it through that little tiny hole down there, get one lined up with a screwy get one bolt in and then turn it with a crank, get the rest of your bolts in. Sounds easier than it is. I think we've just got one. One more bolt to put in. And that's all boxed off. Gearbox has been done, just got to put the oil in. But to get it in, I need like a little squirty bottle with a side, like a mad funnel to get in there. Otherwise it'll just piss out everywhere. What did you do with that what we've got? Pull. Yeah. One new radiator. Nice and fresh. The other one that actually fell apart here, look. That's that one. It's just all, it's just snapped in. Basically had far too much pressure in it and it blew the car up basically. Kettled it. Like that. The air conditioning rad's not brilliant. But we'll only find out if that leaks once it's back in the car. But I'm not too fussed about that. The car will work without it. But everything else is pretty much done. I'm just waiting on one more injector because it turned out all my injectors were knackered. So I've had to buy six injectors. They're like 300 quid ish each and they're 550 quid from Land Rover. So it would have been like three grand that I've had to have spent on injectors for this, um, which I wasn't going to do. 
So I ended up buying six off eBay. He said they were all tested, they were all fine. Um, but one of them was knackered. So five out of six work. It was 240 quid for the six of them it was. So I'm just sent him a message to send one back because it doesn't work. So I've got five good ones in there. I just need to buy one new one, I think. So it's going to cost me 300 quid for one injector. But then everything to do with the engine and all that's spot on and working now. So we should be good to go with that. We've just got to get the radiator pack in, plumb all the pipes in, get some water in it, wait for the new injector to come, and then we can bring the body down. And we're only going to plug the looms in. We're not going to fasten all the body down and just see if we can get it running before we plug everything in, or before we bolt the car back down, see? Because I've had enough to spend the money now. I don't think I've spent that much. I think I've spent probably what it is to buy one running in this age, this mileage. It probably owes me what, it's, what it costs to buy one running. But I've got a fully, fully free, fully, that's hard to say. I've got a fully rebuilt engine and there's just loads of trust gone into this now. So I'll trust this engine more than one that you don't really know about because you've spent that much time with it. We put that many brand new parts in it. It's freshly rebuilt. It should be good to go for frigging years and years, this thing. Probably do another 160 mile. And like I service my cars like every four or five thou. So it'll last forever, this thing, as long as I've got it anyway, so. Right guys, so we're nearly ready for the much awaited moment where we can give this engine a crank and see if it turns over. But before we can get there, the first thing we need to do is get the body back on the car, connect everything up, and then it's time. All right, so we just put last injector in. Plug everything in, get the battery connected and see where it'll go. Okay, so this is it now. This is the moment we found out, will this engine crank or has Liam and his family wasted the last two months rebuilding a dead engine? So cross your fingers and cross your toes and give the video a like. What? It is gonna start. <laughs> In there, done. That won't matter, that not being tight there, will it? Attempt number two, here we go. Got ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't know what he's doing. Obviously, he's getting fuel for some reason. See, it could be that fuel pump, we don't know. That what? Fuel pump. Fucking okay, hell. Yeah. But there's fuel there, so if there's fuel there, it should be letting it through, shouldn't it? Nah, it wouldn't start like that if it was short of fuel, would it? Well, it's not running off here, it was running on stiff. So, while getting the engine running like that was obviously somewhat of a win, it wasn't running on its own two legs. Liam's dad was having to assist it with the use of brake fluid. And the guys would try to figure it out for the rest of the day, but they couldn't hack it, and sadly, they had to go home that evening without it running right and leave it for another day. Meaning, after all that, Liam still doesn't know if his car is ever going to be running again. So the next day, myself, Liam and Andy would head on down to go meet up with Joe from Shifting Metal to go pick up two of his projects for him. And when we were on our way back, Liam's dad had been attempting to start the engine, and he sent us this video. So, so basically, because my dad's in the garage, sorting the bits out on the Range Rover for me. So last night we couldn't get it to run because I need a fuel pressure sensor. And I've got a spare one, but we never had the right size spanner. So anyway, we've gone to work, brung some tools home, we've gone back tonight to, to swap it out. So I'm hoping this is a video, because it's not like that, of it starting and running. But Ideally, I would have liked to have been there, but, you know, yeah. collaboration's gone in the way and all that. So you don't know what you're about to open? No, this could be... This could be nothing. It's well, I've, we've had it turns yeah. up on the time. We had them running on smack, so. Oh, right. Good. Yeah. Well, good luck, mate. Yeah. Just gonna open those. Standing around. They were not. Alright. Oh, lovely. Big smiles, Marco. <laughs> Big smiles, what happened? 
<laughs> so it runs on, on, the, on its own steam, yeah. No. Okay. Sad, that. That's good, man. It's been a long time oh, coming, that. Oh, yeah. I can forget about that now. Yeah. So yeah. basically now, yeah, we can go. I'll go there tomorrow. I'll just start it myself because I want to start it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah man. Yeah, and then obviously get all my wheels back on. Finish it all up. Right, so I know I got started last night, but I want to start it myself just for fits and gigs because it's been waiting for ages. So I'll give it a give it a go. If you're not yeah, we've been messing with them pipes, haven't we? Sounds. Right, so give it a go. Lovely job, like. Yeah, it does actually sound sweet, doesn't it? On the video yesterday, it's it, a little tiny bit knocky on the video. It might just be Richard's camera, though. Oh. Not bad like that. We still need to do that gearbox as well, don't we? The rest of the gearbox oil. Yeah, we're pretty much back together here now, all the bumpers back on. Just got grill headlights to go in, and then a couple of covers under the under the bonnet. And then that's done. Need to get one of these, because it looks terrible like that. It's missing the cover off the top. That's off that side, Dad. Right, so, absolutely made up the car runs. Um, it's been a bit of a long time coming, but you've just got to be patient with stuff like this. Now they've got the truck running, I'll probably only do one more video on this because that's all we've got time for today in this video. And it'll be literally just put the wheels on, wire the tow, tow electrics in, and then obviously I'll give it my first wash, first clean, because I've not even done that yet since I got the car. And then I might do a bit of a test drive, see what it's like, because like say, I've never even driven it. So if you liked today's video, please give us a like, subscribe, comment. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We'll see you in the next one. I'm not seeing the boat. It's going to be in the boat. So do you know when they pull the step up? Yeah. I can make a bigger door for the toilet. Ah, right. And then shut the door and then drop the steps back down. It's not rocket science. Take the prince of the moon and back, you know. Take the f***ing door off. Your boat's in it. You've not got anyone else here. Just shut the door open. Yeah. You.